Hello. We're here for our second part of uh, asking for help is hard, especially with ADHD and some things, tips and tricks ha, 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 to uh, get started on it. And we're going to talk about asking for help is scary. What is scary about asking for help? Well, uh, I often hear, what if it doesn't work? Like, what if what if the things that I've read online that might help don't in my case, but I mean, very few people are genuinely so niche that there isn't a solution to their problems. Eventually, sometimes it takes a long time, but none at all is just not likely, but the process it's also important to acknowledge the process of going through that and trying multiple things especially can be extremely uh uh rejection sensitivity yeah unhelpful uh and and poke at that rsd um piece which is so yeah if we're having some rejection sensitivity and there's some other videos on that um then that's going to make it even more difficult to ask for help and to feel like, okay, they might say no, like, yeah, the thing might not work getting help in the first place. Like, you know, coaching might not work or therapy may not work. And in fairness, they don't work for everyone. Do they have relatively high efficacy rate? Yeah, they do. Otherwise people wouldn't talk about them all the time. Um, but sometimes there's that fear that I'll have nothing left if I don't, like if I try that thing and it doesn't work. Um, but that's not true. There's always something else, like there are coaches that'll be a better fit than some other people. And so that's why finding a really good fit coach matters a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and like, and then sometimes you think it'll be a good fit and you're not, or sometimes we just need novelty. And so some people will like change to somebody else just, just to hear a different voice for a little while. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. There are always things in, in that asking for help piece that can be different, but like, I want to validate it is hard. It it's is. hard with the idea they might not, they might say no, or asking for the help may, may not result in the outcome that we want. And it was really hard and exhausting to do that in the first place. Mm -hmm. And those are true. And I know it sounds cliche, but like, there's no way to know if we don't try. Mm -hmm. And we said it before, we just can't do everything on our own. Mm -hmm. And, and if you can only try a little bit at a time, that's okay. Like try a little bit at a time, but we just can't. We can't assume we will always do everything all by ourselves. Mm -hmm. Yep, absolutely. Um, another thing that I have heard is, what if I am too broken or some other word like this? What if I'm too something to even benefit from that? And the, the word broken or other judgmental words, I would not necessarily agree with, but there are times when you cannot benefit from one kind of thing or another. Um, but it's if you're thinking about it if you're asking that question the likelihood i'd say is lower and again you don't know you, you can say that to your professional hopefully like like and, and if, if you sense awkwardness around that might not be the right person but like saying hey like what do you think like this is the current circumstance i'm operating under what do you think is is my likelihood of success in this area because you know Brittany and i have experienced people who are like it's not the right stage going through a divorce or recent death in the family or illness or many other extreme things can interfere but once that is resolved one way or another then then there is time and energy freed up to get going again yeah there are times when it's just not a good time um and there are times when we've both had the conversation with clients of hey do you need to take a break from this to focus just on the therapy. If we see somebody's yeah. not making a lot of progress, you know, it's yeah. not ethical to continue. I mean, if they if they know the, the risks and they still want to, okay, but we wanna make sure that people know exactly our perspective. And, and sometimes it is like, I had somebody who just realized that there was some trauma that this person had not realized before. And they're like, so I'm gonna check with the therapist and see, do they think I should tackle coaching at the same time as I tackle mm. this? I wanna make sure I'm making the best use out of my coaching. Yep. And, and I talked to the therapist and decided to take a coaching break to deal with this pretty serious trauma that had been mostly neglected in the background. Mm. And, and that's appropriate. Like if we're not in a good place to make use of one thing, it's okay 
to then find a different one. And it's okay to ask the previous person, like, how many times have you helped somebody find a therapist, Colleen? I know I've done it an awful lot. <laughs> Did I do it 20 minutes ago? Uh-huh. Right, exactly. Have I done it many times in the past few weeks? Yeah, yeah, have. Yeah. Um, and that's okay. And, and it's okay to ask for help to get the other help. Like, yes. And to find the next one. There was one person that like, because goodness of fit for a therapist is super important to them, like even above regular. Um, and the idea of finding a new one, like if it didn't work was too debilitating, this particular person decided to go with one of those uh, online services that may or may not take their insurance just because they will match you with the next person. You don't have to mm-hmm. then go through the interview process all over mm-hmm. again. Yeah. And so that mm-hmm. was that was how they felt their um, resources would be best used was to look yeah. into one of those services. And so it's just because one thing doesn't work doesn't mean you can't find another thing that does and doesn't mean maybe that person can't help you do that. Yeah. The important thing is that we're taking the lessons in and learning like, okay, so what do I need instead? And, and sometimes asking the questions that are hard to ask, like, Hey, so what do I need instead? Yeah. Um, what else can can contribute to uh, asking for help being scary? Uh, so uh, sometimes folks have a lack of trust from previous bad experiences. Um, yeah. And, you know, they can be trauma. They can be just like, hey, you know, somebody said they were going to help and they didn't. Or like, you know, the horror stories about bad mental health support, Mm -hmm. um, which are horrible. And I do believe that they're in the minority, but they exist. Yeah. And, and it doesn't mean that there's no good help out there, but it can be really scary. And if you are at that point where like, it causes you some, like, you can feel it in your chest tightness. It might be time to ask for somebody else to look like dive into it with you, whether Mm -hmm. it's troubleshooting, whether it's like asking a friend to like, Hey, can we just look this thing up together Mm -hmm. um or another kind of support group um I know that's something that people have done in the guild before like hey I gotta do this really unpleasant task is somebody else gonna be there in co-working like can Mm -hmm. I check in on this yeah yeah for specifics I've even heard uh, uh, one or two uh um clients or prospective clients tell me that they other ADHD coaches they've met with have no showed on them so for that, I profusely apologize on behalf of all of us. I get, you know, life happens and ADHD is a thing when coaches have ADHD too, that's a whole thing. But I am soundly sorry for anybody who has had that experience because I, I did it. I, I worked up whatever it took me to be here and the coach mm-hmm. wasn't there. That sucks. And I'm so sorry. Yeah. And and there are other situations that can that can be like that. Um, but yeah. I, the fact is it's scary and everything is like, it sort of fits with our theme of asking help. Everything is less hard with help. So yes. if, if it means you need to take a step back, like, okay, the, the looking up the professional, that one is really scary. So is the first piece of asking help, asking someone to sit down with me to look over it. Yeah. Somebody who you have built enough trust with to reach out that, that mm-hmm. you like a friend or something even a teacher or something yeah yeah um who who can I do this with who can I get some accountability from um and there are services you know there's our guild there's the um the uh I'm forgetting the name of the service anyway there's co-working services out there Mm -hmm. if you aren't sure focus mate um ADHD hive yeah so there are other places to turn if you're like I seriously don't have anyone And then, you know, you've joined a community of somebody who's looking, also looking for help. And if that makes it feel more balanced, then, then that can be one thing to turn to too, so that you have some support going in. They're like, oh, and there's other people there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Another point uh, to help with that is if there are specific experiences you've had in the past that you feel like this is hard, but I think I can get there. Think about what was it about them that made things feel unsafe and then have boundaries. Um, I had a client who had a list of very specific and very important questions for me of like, okay, if this happens or if this happens, um, you know, how would we address it hypothetically to make that person feel safe to engage in that conversation with me? It was excellent. Yeah. And, and I want to put it out there. Like we've touched on some of the extreme examples. 
all asking for help is scary if you're here watching yeah. this video. Like there's lots of much lower levels and we're going to talk about that too. And it sort of all could fit under scary because um, it's uncomfortable and it's uncomfortable for a lot of reasons. But um, but if it's like in the really scary territory, take take a step back, find a an even like, you know, tier one support like mm -hmm. from tech support. But I don't remember which one's good. Anyway, find your first level. Like, is it just the person to like help me look into the other person? Like, and and so it may it may involve taking a step back because everything that we do with somebody else is usually less scary. Mm -hmm. Yep, as long as the trust exists there initially, and that's that's the thin end that, that can then grow. Mm -hmm. Awesome. All right, thank you. That is asking for help is hard, and it's scary. Next up, we are going to talk about asking for help is hard because I worry about bothering people. Uh oh. See you All next right. Time. Until next time.